Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Random Pets Genetics Challenges here in our laboratory. And today we are actually not going to be working with our many, many wonderful random cats and dogs, if you could even call them that at this point. We are actually going to be working with one of my favorite sayings that I learned in kindergarten and confused the heck out of me because I lived in Texas, so it totally didn't apply. But we are going to be working with the saying, in like a lion, out like a lamb. Because that is an expression that I don't know is still really popular or not, uh, but it has to do with winter coming in at the beginning of the year with all of its ferociousness, the growling, howling blizzards, and then the peaceful, beautiful days of spring transitioning as the season goes on. So I just can't get that expression out of my head lately because in like a lion here in Michigan, we have so much powerful snow sometimes it is cold we have very powerful winds coming up off of the great lakes and i very much um am looking forward to the beautiful lamb days of spring so i really just have been thinking in like a lion out like a lamb in like a lion out like a lamb over and over again as a kind of a way to try to summon spring and then the more i thought about it the more i was like you know it's taken a while to get rid of winter and to get into spring here in michigan I wonder what it would look like if the lion and the lamb had babies. And then I realized I had the perfect experimental laboratory that we could see those results. So that's what we are going to be doing today. We are going to be celebrating the arrival of spring. It is past March 20th. That means the official arrival of spring, even if apparently the snow falling outside my window right now has not gotten the memo with the birth of lion lamb puppies. I'm not even sure what you would call a lion and lamb puppy, so I need your guys' suggestions for sure. But before we get started, I would like to give a huge shout out to the people that I found this lion and this lamb from because they are not my creations. I found them on the gallery and they were so good, I realized that I just could not possibly, no pun intended, make these guys even better. So this is the Congo lion, it can be very very, very, very hard to track down the original creator on the gallery sometimes, but I think the Congo Lion was originally created by Pet Exotica. Uh, I'm not sure, but it seems to be a pretty, pretty good bet that this person may be the person who originally created the lions. If that's not true, I apologize. Please leave the actual name in the video description. I just really want to make sure that whoever created him gets all the credit for it because this is such an amazing lion. I love it. And I'm not lying about that either. <laughs> the puns begin. And then when I saw this lamb, like this little sheep, little Suffolk sheep, I just fell in love. I fell in love. I, I don't know if this is the original creator or not, uh, but this is from Grim Kerr, uh, I think, and I'm not sure if that's actually true. And I don't mean to question that. I just don't want to credit somebody who like didn't actually make it. But I think so. I think it's from Grim Kerr and they have done an amazing job because this is the best lamb on the gallery. All of the others are literally just poodles. I am not, I'm not lambing about. Haha, <laughs> okay, now I'm pushing the puns too far. But what I wanted to do before we had any babies with the lion and the lamb is turn to our amazing Kalino's fantastic abilities and see if we can make this lamb and we can make this lion look even more fantastic with her fantastic custom content. So we're going to be digging through the pet clothing and we're going to see if there's anything that I can gift unto the lion and the lamb to really make them look like lion and lambs and possibly pass on something as fantastic as fangs or adorable dainty little hooves to their babies. So we do actually have quite a few fangs. I I'm, think most of these are from Kalino. Look at that! Oh my gosh, that is so cool! I love that one! Oh, we can make a saber tooth lion! Oh, we'll have to do that in the future for sure. I think small fangs would be good for our lion, which is not what they have like in real life, I know guys, <laughs> but it just kind of helps to make it more dramatic for right now and really cool looking. All right, what else? I don't think we have any kind of poofy, it'd be kind of cool if, um, 
there the way that there's like these little neckties or the way that there's this really cool reef that Kalino made what if we could have like an extra poofy mane like a lion's mane custom content piece that could go around the neck and expand the fluffosity of the floofiness of our different animals even more that would be pretty fun so let's see i think the fangs and i'll make them smaller and anything else that says lion to me i think let's look at the tails because yeah we'll make the small fangs and then let's come over to the tails because i have custom a lot of custom content for the tails just fyi we are going to be beginning the advanced random genetics challenge soon since we have finished our 100 dogs random genetics challenge i do think it is time to add in even more of the custom content i have discovered so we'll be working on that but for a lion tail in real life, they're kind of very thin from the base until the little tuff at the end. So I think that if we can find the right mix, can I shrink this tail down somehow? Because I'm trying to make it look like this horse tail. What if I had, oh my gosh, a twirly tailed lion. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Uh, I would really like to be able to make it that horse tail, but I think you could only do that if you had different type of fur. And the thing is, this is the, the perfect fur for the lion. So unfortunately, it doesn't seem like I can do much with the tail, but that's okay. Oh, do we have like claws that we could put onto the, the paws? I know we have like these really cool hoof claw combinations uh, for mythological creatures, but I don't think we just have front paw claws for the lions. So we'll just go ahead and leave it at fangs. And then for the little lamb, I was actually thinking I kind of wanted to lighten the little lamb up a little bit uh, and give it just like a quick overlay and let's go with white and let's make it mid opacity and just oh <laughs> okay that was a little bit more than I intended what about this one there we go I just kind of wanted I think that I kind of like this where you can see the lamb a little bit better what if I did it again it does look a little bit more like a dog this way, so maybe we can just darken the face. So let's try darkening the face a little bit with a little brush. Hmm. Okay. About. Oh, that's really cool, actually. Kind of comes out green for some reason. <laughs> let's just go. There we go. Uh, I kind of like that a little bit. Maybe. Uh, let me come down, maybe darken the little legs a little bit. Yeah, that actually works out pretty okay. I want to darken the little teeny paws and the little tip of the tail just a teensy bit. But I like that a lot because it does make me think that the lamb is just a, a little bit lighter colored, which I enjoy quite a bit. And then, of course, we can gift upon the lamb's teensy tiny little hooves. So, or teensy tiny little paws, some hooves. And I don't think these ones are from Colino. Are these cloven? Okay. I can't remember. I don't think that lambs have cloven hooves. But I think the little cloven goat hooves are the only things that I have at the moment. Let me triple check. Yeah, okay. So cloven hooves are probably not correct for a lamb. In fact, I'm like pretty positive about that. <laughs> no pun intended because we're working with their paws, you see. But I kind of like the, the look of this one right here, especially if you turn from the side. Oh, we have a little lamb now. <gasps> this is so cute. Are you a stubborn little lamb? Oh, it's a stubborn little lamb. It's a little playful lamb. I think I'm going to make this one uh, friendly. Skittish. Well, I guess a lamb could be kind of skittish. Uh, and stubborn, stubborn makes sense to me too. All right, let's have you stand up, little cutie. There we go. And then I think because it's a lamb, we won't actually go ahead and give it any horns, maybe? Let me think. What do we have here? Let's kind of check it out. Do we have little horns? We could make a flying lamb. We could make a lamb with really big ears. Oh my gosh, that'd be kind of cute. We And we may end up with some fanged lamb babies as a result of breeding with the lion. And then you can have little goat uh, horns. But I think we're good. Okay. So, all right, guys. Let's go ahead and see what the children of a lion 
and a lamb are actually going to look like and hopefully through this random challenge by adding the extra genes we will see if we have fanged baby lambs or hooved baby lions that's going to be really fun and maybe spring will finally get the memo and come and see me so let's do this okay little lamb you're gonna go ahead you and the lion <gasps> it's a lion baby you guys oh my gosh I love this so much more than I thought I would actually. Oh my goodness. Look at how beautiful and detailed that mane is. <gasps> we might have to make different colored lions because this is just way too cool. Oh, and his little floppy head. Okay, so there's baby number one. Let's come over to this side. All right, lion, lamb. Oh my gosh, baby number two it looks completely different. She must have inherited uh, a different kind of coat pattern. Let's go with oh, baby number three. Oh my gosh, baby number three. Oh my gosh, baby number three. You are so pretty. What is happening? How am I falling in love with these little ones? I think it's the beautiful, beautiful lion coat. What do you guys think? Oh my gosh, I'm so in love with this. All right, baby number four. Oh, there we go. We're, we're really like, there's no lamb coat just yet. Let's try going from the lamb side of things again. Baby number five. Yeah, we're really not getting the lamb coat. I think we're about to have our last baby too. <gasps> this is a lamb coat. Oh my gosh, but this is the lion coat. Okay, so we did not end up with a baby lamb. Out of all of these, it appears the lion's genetics are a, a lot stronger, but I'm not sure if I can really complain because these are ridiculously cute babies. So let's go ahead and grow them up and see what happens when we have the rushing lion of winter and the adorable lamb of spring combined and drag out spring taking forever. And we'll also roll a random dice to see if these little ones have inherited the fangs of their father or the dainty hooves of their mother. So little one, welcome little guy. I should probably give you a spring name. Uh, let's go with Robin, to be ironic, because you're, you're a little lion and now I named you after a bird. All right, three, two, one, ta-da. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh! <laughs> okay, this turned out so much better than I thought it could. I, I love this. I don't know why. There's no logical reason, but it's like a miniature lamb lion now, and it's fantastic! Robin, I think you are friendly, adventurous, and loyal, and I hope you go and make somebody very, very happy in their new home. Oh, this is gonna be so good. All right, let's go with, um, we also have this little one. Let's go with, uh, we have Robin, and let's go with Daisy. Let's try out Daisy and see how Daisy grows up. She doesn't look like either the lion or the lamb, so somehow between her yellow eyes and her coat coloring, she inherited something a little different. <gasps> She's a little lamb creature too! Are they all going to be- do we have a little litter of lambs? Oh my goodness, you guys, we're gonna have to see. Are we going to end up with enough lambs to indicate that spring will come soon? This is like watching that groundhog rise to see how many weeks of winter you have left. Uh, or will we end up with a lot of lions that will say that perhaps Michigan has another snowstorm to throw my way? Let's go ahead and see. Daisy, I think that you're actually pretty independent. Uh, I think that you're, you're friendly, but you're a little stubborn. You don't mean to be, you just are. Now we have this little one. Let's go ahead and let's name him, um, another spring name. Gosh, it's been so long since I've seen spring. Let's go with Sprout. Even though that's kind of a very odd name for a lion. Maybe I'm hoping for a lamb? <gasps> another lamb! Oh my gosh, and he looks really different than his brother. We have one, I think it's because of the color of his eyes and the way his ears are shaped, who looks so noble. And then we have one that looks a little bit like somebody kind of recolored a chihuahua. <laughs> I think this guy is going to be very vocal. Oh, he's cute. I think he's a little jumpy like his mom. And I think that he is pretty loyal. He likes to stay in one place. But we're three out of six on the lamb so far. But what will happen to little... Uh, I almost want to name this one Duke for some reason. 
Let's see. Another good spring name. Let's go with uh, Mud Puddle. That'd be a good warrior cat name, but we'll discuss that later. <gasps> Mud Puddle! You grew up into a biggin with no fur, but you have a lion tail. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Okay, I think we have ourselves a hunter who is, um, because he likes to dig around things, who's also a couch potato and a little bit of a troublemaker, but we're gonna exit before he can go ahead and leave that nasty little pile. Uh, all right, and then we've also got a female here. I'm gonna go ahead and name her, let's see, let's go with, uh, Fawn. Let's go with Fawn. There we are. And let's see how fawn it grows up. <gasps> Another lamb! We've done it, my friends! This like this lamb is a little bit more concerning than the others, I won't lie. Uh, she looks like she's ready to headbutt somebody. <laughs> she definitely looks like she's ready to headbutt somebody. Oh, and I forgot to roll! Okay, do we have fangs or hooves? No. Ah, oh, curses. This one would have been really cool to have fangs on. What about here? No. Interesting. On this one? Hmm, let's see. No. What? Come on. What? Why is it all even numbers? No fangs? Oh, thank goodness we have hooves on this one. I was going to be so disappointed if I didn't get fangs or hooves on anyone, but I was rolling and nothing was happening. So there we go. We have little dainty hooves. Let's make them kind of, it will make them gray so we can see them. And now we have our very final little one. We are going to go ahead and name this one Hope because I really hope it will be br be spring soon. Uh, oh wait, it's a boy. That's okay. Well, let's go with Courage actually. After a certain cowardly dog. There we go. And three, two, one, go. <gasps> Adorable! Oh, I love him. Look at him. Oh, huzzah! And you guys, we've done it! Courage at the very last moment has fangs and he has hooves. I knew we'd get one eventually. <gasps> Look at this guy! He's so cool! Wouldn't it be the most amazing thing to see a fanged, hooved little lamb lion roaming down the street? I mean, actually, that'd be a little terrifying in real life. I'm not going to lie. But we're going to make him adventurous, we're going to make him pretty active, and we are going to make him pretty smart. Uh, and I think that this, this is probably one of the coolest creations that we got out of this mix. I think I might start saving the top of the litter, the pig of the litter, you might say, from all of these experiments and begin seeing them appearing in a certain strangerville world that we have, roaming around as the experiments of a local mad scientist. I think having some of our creations from our random pets genetics would be so much fun in the background of our Sims stories. What do you guys think? I think that'd be great. But all right, I enjoyed this a lot more than I thought. So thank you very much to our lion and lamb and the people who created Created them for giving us this opportunity to dwell on all things spring-like and thank you to courage for being an absolutely amazing mix of the two because this is this is a lot cooler than I thought this would turn out we shall carry on with more adventures in the future my friends so if you could do please leave a like to toss a treat to our wonderful animals and consider subscribing to prepare the random pets genetics challenge for its advanced genetics season because I think you guys are gonna have a lot of fun with that and I'm gonna need help with names and picking out all sorts of traits and I think the results are going to be fantastic so I'll see you guys next time bye bye